Hello, and welcome to the overview on how to complete the web-based version of the Certificate of Records Destruction, or as it's been called in development, the ERM3. This online version will replace the current PDF and Word versions of the form. While the template looks very different from the current versions, I hope you'll find that this new process of entering information, as well as authorizing and affirming destruction, will flow about the same as your current process. This page is referred to as the form creation page and the person entering the information as the form creator. This person can be anyone in your agency or office who works with the records. We'll begin this process in the organization information section by clicking this drop down box to indicate whether you are authorizing destruction for a state agency or for a locality or regional entity, which also includes local authorities. From this point on, I'll use the term agency to mean all of these entities. Click the agency name box that just appeared to select your agency. You can scroll down to find the name or just start typing the first few letters until the agency fills in. If the agency's name is not found, then your agency is not on file with the Library of Virginia and the agency's records officer should contact the assigned records management analyst per the guidance in the FAQ. If the records to be destroyed are of the agency as a whole rather than those of a department or subdepartment, then jump down to select the designated records officer. If the name of a currently appointed records officer does not appear, then that means the officer's account in our database no longer contains a valid email address. If the destruction being authorized is for a division or department, from here on referred to as just department, then click that box and look for the appropriate title. If the needed title is not in the list, then choose Other and enter the name in the field that will appear to the right. Otherwise, Click the name of the appropriate department. If there is no records officer designated at a department or subdepartment level, an agency wide records officer will be the only option. If a subdepartment is required for reporting, then click that box and make the selection. Whenever a department, and if needed, a subdepartment are selected, the agency-wide records officer or officers will appear at the bottom of the drop-down box. Above those will be any department officers, above which will be any designated by the sub-department. For demo purposes, we'll use the agency records officer. In the approving officials section, there are freeform fields into which you'll enter the name, email address, and title of the person in your agency who will most know whether there is a hold on these records, such as a legal discovery, FOIA request, audit, or any type of investigation. Make certain that the email address here is correct. An incorrect address will irrevocably prevent the form from getting to the approving official and bring the process to a stop. Under organization address, it will be the agency's preference on whether to use a physical or mailing location. Likewise, the central address of the agency may be used, or in the case of reporting for a decentralized department or subdepartment responsible for the records, that address may be used. The records to be destroyed section is where you will provide the information about the series subject to this destruction authorization. And you'll begin that process by clicking the Add New Record Bar. Here you will see the fields that correspond to the middle grid in the Word and PDF versions. Click on the Schedule box to see the list of schedules available for your agency. If you work for a state government agency that has agency specific schedules, the number for those schedules will appear first, followed by all of the state general schedules. If you work for a locality or a local or regional authority, then the list will contain all of the local general schedules. Take note that the agency specific schedules are ordered by number. The general schedules for both state and local are ordered alphabetically. Next, 
will select the appropriate schedule and choose a series. The series, similar to the general schedules, are ordered alphabetically by title. If your office refers to these records by another internal title, you may enter that in the series notes field, but that is totally optional, not a requirement. Now enter the dates that mark the beginning and ending of when this record series was active. If the date range is not known, a good faith approximation is fine. Please note the format in which the dates need to appear. Then select the volume unit. For paper or other analog records, such as cassettes, VHS tapes, moving picture film, etc., choose cubic feet. For electronic records, you would choose an appropriate byte unit. Type the number that represents the volume amount for the records that will be destroyed, going out no further than two decimal places. A technical browser dependent note here is. If you have one, be careful not to scroll your mouse wheel while hovering over a numerical field. Doing so can inadvertently change the number. If you use a scroll wheel, be sure to first click outside of the field. Next, we'll choose the appropriate destruction method. For analog records that allow for non-confidential destruction like this series, all of the allowable destruction methods will appear reminding us that series with a non-confidential disposition can be destroyed confidentially. Of the six methods listed, only the last two are allowed for non-confidential destruction. When an analog series requires confidential destruction, the recycled and trash options will not appear. We'll cover electronic records in a moment. Location is a freeform field that may be used to indicate where the records were stored prior to their destruction. The use of this field is solely at the agency's option. If, for whatever reason, you determine that a whole subform for a record is inaccurate and needs to go away, you can delete the subform by clicking its respective Remove Record bar and then the Remove button. Up to 14 more record series can be added to this form by clicking the Add New Record button. The entry process is the same as for the above record, but this time I'll choose a series from a general schedule. We'll call it an electronic record. Choose a megabyte unit and a volume of 450. For non-confidential electronic records, all four destruction methods are available with delete being the only non-confidential option. If confidential destruction is required for electronic records, then they must be destroyed by utilizing one of the three confidential methods. If there are no more record series to be added, scroll down to the form creator section to enter your name, email address, phone number, and title. A tip here, and this may vary by browser and security controls, but after you complete free form fields once, it could be a shortcut if your browser will populate those from memory. Once you have completed the form, you might give it a once over to make sure everything is filled in and appears correct. If you believe it is, then click the Submit Completed Form button at the bottom of the page. Surprise! If the application detects something wrong anywhere in the form, it will let you know. In this case, it's telling me I'm requesting authorization to destroy records that have not reached the end of their retention period. I'll scroll down until I find the highlighted box where I learned that I entered a date for a two-year retention series that is not two years old. I'll make that correction and try submitting the form again. A successful submission is indicated by a new web page advising you to check your inbox for an email. By opening the email and clicking the button, you will confirm that this is your address and you are in fact the person who created the form. If you should receive an email for a certificate that you did not create, just disregard the message. Confirming the email address will return another browser window acknowledging the verification and advising that the form is heading to its next stop, the approving official.
closing the browsers or tabs and deleting the email is the last step in the form completion process. However, there is one last piece of guidance. When the time comes that an approving official or a records officer flags something about your form that requires some type of edit, you'll get an email with the subject line, Edits Required for RM3, followed by the form number. Clicking the Begin Editing button will open up a web browser page displaying the form you created. Scroll down the page to find the flagged issue. In this case, a series proposed for destruction has a hold in place, so the records are not eligible for destruction at this time. Since there is another record series in the form that is still eligible, remove the flagged series in subform record 1 and then click the Submit Completed Form button at the bottom of the page. The form will go to the approving official just like the first time, only you will not receive an email requesting address confirmation. This completes the video guidance for the web-based Certificate of Records Destruction form. There are more details about completing this form in the written guidance document. If you have any specific questions, please contact your assigned records management analyst. Thank you.